forsake you. Because I am God. I'm God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. So then we said, as I look now, and I think about how good God is. Now, if God knows the hairs on our head, then God knows all about us. So he says, as I consider God, consider his name, consider his heavens, his fingers, and consider his care, he says, now that ought to put me in a posture of praise. He says, that ought to put me in a point where I start to thank God. Not just when things are going good, but I can thank God any time. I can thank God before the blessing falls. Because we serve a such a wonderful God, I can thank him in the midst of the trouble. Oh, come here, Pastor. Do you have any witnesses here today? Well, well look, if, if, if things get real hot in your life, uh, I got some witnesses called Shat, Rat, Meshat, and Abednego. And they'll tell you that even when things get hot in your life, that God will go in the fire with you. Well, come here, Daniel. Come here, Daniel. If Daniel were here today, Daniel would tell you that if you got trouble all around you, and those lions were representative of trouble, and what did, what did Daniel do? He praised God, told God, God, I'm sleeping now. I need to get some rest. And he laid down on the lions. What you saying, Pastor, that if you got God, you can go to sleep on your trouble. And if anybody need to hear that today, and wake up and refresh. Now, the trouble won't be gone, but at least you'll know that God was with you. Right? Oh, do I have any witnesses here today? Has God ever walked with anybody through some trouble? start thanking, thanking God because of God's name. Because we are made in his image. The Bible says it's like a stamp that he has placed on us. And not only did he stamp us with who he is, but he rubbed it around. He, he molded it around and, and then he breathed some life into it. His, he breathed his breath into man and man became a, a living being. Oh, is anybody glad today? That we serve a God like that who takes the time to form us, to mold us and make us, and then it takes what's out of him and he puts it back inside of, inside of us. The story is told of a, of a little girl. They went to worship and went to praise. And, and after worship, she got along with her mama and she said, Mama, she said, Mama, now, now I'm confused. She said, I heard what the preacher was up there talking about. And he said that God is bigger than us. He said, yeah, baby, that's right, that's right. But mama, then he said, God lives inside of us. He said, mama, mama now I'm really confused. Now she said, why, baby? She said, well, because if God is bigger than us, and if he lives inside of us, right. then shouldn't he show every now and then? <laughs> oh, I wish somebody would get that today. If you got God living inside of you, don't you know that he's bigger than your problems? Don't you know he's bigger than your situation? He's bigger than your circumstance? And every now and then, God ought to shine through. Every now and then. Not all the time, Sister so Ruth, but sometimes. Every now and then, he ought to come get busted through. You ought to get so full that you just can't contain it. Oh, praise God. What if it's an angels, Pastor? Praise God! What if I'm sitting at my desk at school? Praise God! He ought to come through, y'all. Every now and then. Because he's bigger than us. And he put what's inside of him. He gave it to you and I. So we need to thank God because of his grace and his mercy. Thank him because of his presence. The Bible says that we are under his watchful eye. Somebody said if his eye is on the sparrow, then I know that he watches over me. So when you encounter sickness and disease, just know that God is there. Sometimes we're going to stumble in life, y'all. But the Bible tells me that though a righteous man falls seven times, that the Lord is always there to pick him back up. Even if you got enemies at your corner. The ground Bible tells me that he'll make your enemies your footstool. But when we, when we start to think about how good he is, 
if we've ever been cheated out of anything, if we've ever been put down and, and put out, if we've ever been in a point where we needed somebody and all our friends had left us, this word tells me that God will be right there. Amen. Is anybody glad today? Are you glad today? Come on, give God some praise. Layoffs, demotions, family disputes, whatever it is that we go through. David says that God is bigger. He's bigger than all of that. And I thank God today that he has given us chance and opportunity to think about how good he's been. Come on, let, come on, let it marinate for a minute. Let it, let, let it, how good has God been to you? Come on, make this personal now. This is, a, this is a personal moment now. Don't look at nobody else. Don't consider nobody else. You just start thinking about how good. Come on, think about it now. Think about how good has God been to you. Come on, think about where he's brought you from. What he's brought you out of. It's not a cliche, y'all. Look at the times that you could have been dead. Oh, but you're sitting here today. Come on, think about the times when you didn't have. Oh, and, you're, and all your resources were gone. And, and you look around and you still better than blessed. Come on, I need somebody to start thinking. Oh, I didn't know. Look like God thinking about it. I need you to start thinking about it. Just how good you did. And now you need to think about the fact that you didn't do it by yourself. And, and if you had not been for the Lord who was on your side, that trouble would have overtaken you. That disease would have conquered you. That time when you should have been dead, you would not be in the cemetery or something. Come on, somebody needs to come on now. I, I don't need y'all. Come on. Come on, Christians. Now think about how good, how good our God has, has been to each one of us. Yeah. <laughs> 